Good morning. We are back for another episode of 1v1. I am your host, Paolo Sandata Bago. We are doing this for Wombo Combo. And uh, today we're joined by a uh, special guest here to talk to us about being a streamer sa Pilipinas, being a law student, and uh, hopefully being a uh, force for good sa loob ng esports. We're here we're joined by KL Sochan, otherwise known as Seika Chu on Twitch. KL! Good morning. Yeah. How are you? I'm good. I'm good, pal. Yeah. So uh, we're recording this on uh, on Chinese New Year. So, Sinyan uh, Koyla for everyone who is uh, <laughs> celebrating today. Gail, are you celebrating uh, today? Actually, n- no. But I mean, like our only celebration is technically just getting together and eating tikoy. Right. Well, you also don't have class. Uh, you're in law school and you don't have class today. So that counts as a celebration, right? Definitely. It counts as a celebration. All right. So uh, we're going to learn more about KL, KL's life, how to become a Twitch streamer in the Philippines, and uh, being a law student while simultaneously juggling events uh, now and then. So b- before we begin, I'd like to know, KL. Why Seikachu? Why why Seikachu yung ano mo? Yung in in game name mo and what why that? <laughs> I get asked that a lot actually. Um before it used to just be Seika. I used it a lot when I was on DeviantArt as well as when I played Ragnarok online. And a lot of people like I met a lot of people in Ragnarok and everyone that I knew then that I still meet now, they still call me Seika. But when I went to like when I switched over to Tumblr, when I switched over to other like other websites, Seika was always taken. So it's like, oh I'm too right, late. Right. And eventually I tried adding words to it, like eventually it became Seikachu. I don't don't know right. why. I probably thought of Pikachu. Mm-hmm. But it's hey, stuck, hey. I guess. I know sometimes when you watch young Steam, people are going like cosplay Pikachu, cosplay Pikachu, especially when the po- when Pokemon Go was big. Yeah. Anyone remember? Anyone remember Pokemon Go? By the. <laughs> I I played it reached like level twenty something, then I stopped after yeah. a few weeks. I stopped after level level five. Like I got. I got the ano yung parang faction yung ano yung parang teams oh. and then wala na, I just stopped playing. I joined Team Mystic. It's still on my phone. <laughs> oh, damn it! I have a hat <laughs> somewhere. I have a hat here somewhere. And, you know, I am the correct team, the yellow team. I am team ano team instinct. So, so yeah, I-, I wanted to talk to you about. So, so you're on Seikachu. You're on a lot of these websites. Were you always you you were always gaming though, right? From from a young age, what games Definitely. were you in when you were growing up? Aside from Ragnarok Online, <laughs> actually, even before Ragnarok, I guess I started. My first game was Mario on the PC, and then I. Which one was it? Yung typing uh, game na lalo ko yun eh. Sa, sa school merong Mario na typing game. No, I don't think it was a typing game. Um, Mario World. Mario World. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. It's a really old one. And then I got a PS One. I eventually tried playing all the RPGs like Sigden. I played. Um, what else was that? Thousand Arms was. Oh, I guess one of my favorite oh, yeah. games back then. I played Lunar I couldn't One. Beat that, but I couldn't beat that when I was a kid. I was too. Really. I was too stupid. Yeah, I was too stupid playing Thousand Arms when I was a kid. Yeah. So, so you got on into these RPGs when you were growing up, uh, PS One. Right now, online, I think it's going to be very interesting for for some of our viewers. See, I think a lot of people grew up on Ragnarok Online. What were you using uh, as a class nung uh, RO Online? W- w- which server were you on? I'm a Chaos guy. Chaos I started and Chaos. Then I moved on to Fenrir because everybody else moved on to Fenrir for my friends. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, it, it was that yeah. thing, you know. It's Barkade, Barkade based. So, yeah, so yeah. tell me about the Ragnarok days. Well, I started as um, what did I start as? No, I started as a mage. Yeah, I actually oh. didn't know that I was actually using a guy account at first, and then eventually I wanted to be a full support because we didn't have a full support in our guild yet. Right, hmm. right. And this was, was the days of dial-up, right? This was the days of dial-up, was it? Yeah. 
definitely. I had to save up my allowance. I had to buy the one week card <laughs> for um, yeah. the top upload. And on yeah. top of that, I also had to buy my own internet. So like beside my PC, I had this stack of cards that would go up to here, both for like the internet and for our own. It was, oh, it was insane. Yeah. I, I miss that. I mean, yung, yun yung classic na sound, you know, the, the connecting sound. And then when someone calls on your phone, wala na, goodbye. Oh, man, Good. yeah. <laughs> it was the someone worst. Also, yeah. When you're I, I in the watching. <laughs> Ex- oh, yeah, exactly. Uh, and then you disappear. It's like, oh, crap, I'm sorry. Someone called my parents. <laughs> We're giving, like, people uh, 90 feels right now. So so you're playing Ragnarok online. You you became full support. Did you switch from, from Mage? I think full support mage that eh? that was basically you're just dropping frost driver and then trying to freeze people and when you get into wizard you're just dropping blizzards. Oh yeah. So so they were so really like Ragnar- happy. Yeah. So, so you stuck with Ragnarok a lot. You still are you still friends with people in your guild? Was your guild just yung barkad mo or did you started meeting a lot of people online and became friends with them in real life? Actually, yeah. Um most of my really close friends, I actually met them in RO, or like I met them online. Um, I met a few people over at Divin Art, like a few artists, and then we decided to play RO. Um, it was then we ended up making a guild. We were a really, really tight guild, actually. We uh, didn't really do more of the Imperium, but we went out on um, adventures a lot, mostly to collect headgear. Yeah. Uh, headgear hunts, yeah. You know, Eventually, I think, yeah. yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead, go oh. ahead. <laughs> yeah, I was a really avid headgear collector. Well, eventually, we uh, well, we ended up um, trying to do the eyeball, you know, that, that thing where you all just try oh, to meet yeah. up in real life. Yeah. There's a, there's a soundtrack to that, though. Mug the mic. Really? Oh, like, oh, yeah, uh, I remember uh, that. <laughs> I guess were, to be safe. People surprised, be... Were people surprised no, when, they, when they found out you were an actual girl? You were you were not, you know the, <laughs> young girl, a guy in real life. You were an actual, <laughs> an actual lady. Oh no, not so much, cause we already like talked about, you know, what's your ASL, you know, back oh, then. God. Like, oh yeah, I'm actually a girl. <laughs> I feel old. ASL. <laughs> yeah, and you met it's up like with a nostalgia them. Nostalgia blast. It is, it is, it is. And, and so you've made, if you you've made actual, you know, real long life and. Uh, uh, long-term friendships from uh, playing oh, Ragnarok online. Definitely, right. we all um, met up in usually anime conventions. So, you know, it's a lot easier to meet up in um, in malls. Um, I think I'm still really good friends with one of my guild leaders until now. Mm-hmm. We right, still meet sweet. up every now and then. All right. I, I think that I think that's something. Then uh, I don't know. Parang you, we're feeling ayon because we we grew up in that era na. Oy, pag naglalaro ka ng masyadong games, waste of time siya, and then you, you're not making real friends. I, I know that was something that my parents used to tell me, na be careful oh, making yeah. friends online, they're not real friends. But then, oh, a lot of people. I mean, I met Ardy online. Ardy, if you're still listening. But Ar, by the way, <laughs> I met Ardy, Ardy online too. <laughs> yeah, Ardy Esports Overdrive is my producer for this show, guys. He's the one producing my shows for Wombo Obe. And I met Ardy online, and the first time I actually met him in person was Manila Major. We were at the VIP area, and then we met up, and then I told him, you know what? You know, I want to I wanna do stuff. Uh, I want to produce more content. Let's team up, and then that's, that's it. We're friends now. I call him an asshole because he likes the, the wrong <laughs> team. <laughs> he's not listening right now because he's watching E-League. But... Oh, so right. are you not an EG fan? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Once again, people who are watching, it, E-League is on right now. VP VP went from 11 and 2 or 11 and 3. And now the score is tied. Oh, God, my heart. Anyway, let's get back to this really professional production right now. <laughs> Thank you for the update, RD. So, yeah, um, I wanted to talk to you about that. You know, I mean, before before you move away from your Ragnarok, ano, your Ragnarok days, um, it might you know, ba- ba- matuwa ha, ba- in, ano, if, when you figure out that Wombo Wombo is putting up a Ragnarok group. You know, there's a Wombo oh, Wombo. what? Seriously? Ragnarok. Is this the mobile or is this like an actual RO I server? No, I actually want to figure that out because if it's an actual RO server, I'm probably down. Because oh, when I was playing Ragnarok, uh, my, my favorite class was always ano, um, Merchant to Smith. 
So Merchant oh. Black Smith. Yeah, the White that's... Smith. I really like the White Smiths. I like their outfits. <laughs> yeah, yung ano parang naka sleeveless tapos it's very very eighty mm-hmm. suit look niya, and then they hit you with a cart. So that was my favorite. Yes. Na, ano, yeah. Cart revolution, Mamunai. That was my favorite. Na, ano. Oh yeah, so, Mamunai. Yeah. Wombo Combo now has a Ragnarok online group, so I will probably, if if you guys wanna wanna play with, uh, actually I'll probably go on there with a lot of people Please. from Wombo Combo and maybe even say you in the future. Go and join actually, that. Actually, so, like funny story, like just yeah. a week ago, my friend messaged me saying, "Hey, are you interested in playing RO again?" And then like he mentioned a bunch of names, saying, "Hi, I kind of wanna try playing RO again. Let's let's, let's set up a guild." <laughs> There's something I know. When you look at it now, it looks like shit. Because the graphics are it's, it's so different. But it's so nostalgic. It's like looking at bit art, right? It's like nakakaano siya nakakaingan yung maglaro. I'm sure I'm going Exactly. I'm, I'm sure I'm going to hate searching for Hydra cards and GR cards. Oh, yeah. Once I actually well, get into you know, the you could thing. just put a good drop rate for the server. Yeah, uh-huh. also. But we're talking about that with a law student who is telling us to put up a private server, but that's against the law. So, I mean, if, if you're not trying, right? So, you, you're, you're playing a lot of down. exactly, exactly. So, so you're playing, you're playing a lot of RO at the time. This was around what year? Um, what year was it? Two thousand was two thousand six. 2006, 2006. Wait, no, okay. 2008. When did it come out? I forgot. I think I was still in grade school. You were still in grade school, yeah. Probably not 2008 then. Hmm. Right? It's in college what? now. So, yeah, probably around 2006. Was it? Yeah. yeah. I, I actually started um, the week it got released. It took me a while to get the CD, though. Like I had oh, to hunt. Okay. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, I had to hunt for like um one of those old those small mags. They actually was it um, K Zone? K Zone. Remember K Zone? Yeah, K Zone. No, no, no. I think it's K Zone, and then they also had it on Game, the game with an exclamation mark in the magazine. I think if you also, cause you grew up around Makati, the right? you you grew up. Around, oh no, no, uh, I grew up around QC. I just moved QC, um, to Makati for law school. Yeah. Ah, I see. So if if you grew, but I think if you grew up around yeah Makati, Mandaluyong, Guadalupe, uh, you know th- th- those areas, I think Level Up was giving out CDs in schools. Really? Time I, oh yeah, I remember, I remember that. I went to school in Makati, and then they were they were giving out parang mga parang packet. Alala ko pa yun eh, kasi yung uh, the old level up CD in orange and it had nothing on it and it just said Ragnarok on it. And okay, this is if, if someone gave me a CD right now, I wouldn't know what to do with it. <laughs> so I still I still uh, have my RO CD actually. I kept it in like mint condition. Too. It's in one of my drawers back at home. Are you that's probably that's probably you know that, that's 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 that'll make for a good Instagram photo at least, I think. I just actually have it on Instagram, I think. I'm not sure if it's still there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll look for it later and I'll send it to you. All right, so so the Ragnarok days, you were playing it, you know, since since the release, stuck with it for a long time, made made a lot of connections. Probably How did you get? Years. Yeah. How did you get into Dota though? Because I know for a lot of people, the the connection between RO and that's actually why I led with it. The connection between RO and Dota was uh, that, that was exactly it, right? Like people went from. Uh, people went from playing Ragnarok online in computer shops, and then they would see, yeah. yeah, they would see some, someone playing something on Warcraft Three Frozen Throne, going, "That doesn't look like they're playing Warcraft <laughs> Frozen Throne." And then they would play that, and then people started playing Aldora. So, how did you get in? Did, were you play, were you playing in computer shops as well, or how did you get I into played, Dota? One? Oh, I played a lot in computer shops, but it wasn't for Dota. Um, yeah. I actually didn't get in Dota since like Dota 1 but I it was more of I started in um I started in Han just like you know like complexity Han. just like PPD <laughs> um a lot of my friends that I also knew from RO were they shifted to Han apparently cuz they didn't like the old, like Dota, what how Dota 
Dota 1 was going anymore because it was around the time where they were already giving keys for Dota 2 and there are only like a few people that were right right so so this is around 2010 2011 right around that time yeah Yeah. I think maybe 2012 yeah yeah so I got in a bit late I got in a bit late yeah so, so the beta the the beta technically we were in beta for a long time so so you got you got in through uh, Han. So so how did you like Han? I, I know for a lot of people who played they played Han then around the same time na nag down yung original Dota All Stars the forum and then people went into Han and then people tried out Scout. I remember Scout. Um, there was that mage na mage type na hero na parang puppeteer. So so oh, what, yeah. what, 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 were, what was your favorite things about uh, Han? Uh, Heroes of New Earth, for people who don't know what Han is. I guess, you know, to compare, like, other MOBAs with Dota, what I like about the others, I think it would be the skins. Yeah. The skins, okay. I guess because in Han, they were a lot more free with the skins. Like, they had schoolgirl outfits, they had, like, outfits oh. to turn... <laughs> yeah. To turn their um, characters into, like, other other animals. I guess yeah. It's mostly I mostly play games for like the hats. Yeah, ever since the I hats. Okay. The hats. Parang dun yata yung papunta no. I remember sa araw yung purito ng hat was sakat. So easy to get. Oh, it looked yeah. so cool at the time. But the plus so, ten so, was so expensive. Yeah, the plus yeah. You, you had to break a lot of them. I think I only had plus seven in my in the server that I was in. Wale. So okay. Yeah. So. Expensive. So it's really the it's really the cosmetics no, that you that got you in. But you were already because I know you get competitive. Well, you get com- competitive just as a as, as a measure of playing a lot. I know you were talking to me about Dark Moon, Kanina, like before we we recorded, and then how you love playing that. So what once you got into Dota, did, did you think that you were going to get into to esports because we're gonna talk about how you you're, you got into esports and into the industry um, after Definitely this. Definitely not. <laughs> well, so for you, when, it's, uh-huh. it's just just it was just yeah, fun. it's it's really just it's a way to bond with a lot of my friends because we we got pretty busy after a while because you know people with different schedules from different schools we'd um, do like a monthly. A monthly like LAN party. We'd go to Mineski, we'd go to Blue Skies during Christmas break, like we'd sneak out of our parties like after everyone's asleep and it's like K hey, Mineski into RSG. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, that yun yung ano talaga oh, no, that into nagigita talaga ng ng internet cafe. Like, I don't think I've ever set in, set foot into an internet cafe in like really? two years. Yeah, well, wow, no, I, I still I'm at home. <laughs> Well, I guess because my friends are because I mean I I live here in Cebu, so my friends are still in Manila, so my friends are in different areas. My brother lives in Mindanao, for example, so we play online, and I don't oh yeah I stay here, do I? So that's that's awesome because I think that's that's something. Then, however, na ibarin talaga yung feeling yun, na pag yung buong bar kada pupunta ay na ano ng internet cafe and then maglalaro ay lahat. Then ingay yung lahat, trash talk ay yeah. lahat. Do, do you guys do you guys get <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we kind of do, but it's mostly like with each other. That's why we meet oh, yeah, up. Okay. It's like to shout at each other, "Hey, you're overextending! Go back! Why are you being a noob?" Yeah, oh. stuff like that. Ah, boo boo, and then and then you can say that yeah. to your friends. You know, you're not being toxic. Yeah. We're saying that to your friends. All right, so uh, that's one of the main topics I wanted to get to for this interview. You know, so right now you are with GG Network as a partner. How does that yes. work? Um. Well. They uh, they've been um, getting a lot of content creators, so it's right. either um, to do collabs with the other creators that they've gotten, or to get for like talents and their shows. They have a lot of shows right now up, but mostly web shows. They have um, what is it? They have um, a GG stream team wherein they invite yeah. Um, yeah a lot of streamers to go like once a week. They stream it on Play the games. channel. Play games. Yeah, this- Right. And, and Mario, the one so, after Mario that. Zawa, yeah, they, like they, Notice Me Senpai is the one after that, where right, she also right. invites other people to play with her. All right. Now, have you played with Mario Zawa? Would you like to? 
I would actually like the the games that they've been picking for that show have been really fun. It's just that the schedule, I guess. <laughs> yeah, right, because we are also juggling school, law school, uh, on top of it. So that's that's sort of what and I uh, what I wanted to touch on is I think for a lot of the people who watch uh, or you know we're doing this show for they want to know um, they like esports or they like gaming. Uh, they enjoy for a lot of them they enjoy Dota the most, and you're someone who enjoys Dota. But maybe they also want to, you know, at the back of their minds, nag-iisip sila, how do I get into the industry? I don't know anyone. Um, I want to be part of the esports industry, you know. I, I want to I wanna do something. Maybe they think they can be a caster, they can be an interviewer. So you're with GG Network. You do the shows. You, you go to the stream team. But sometimes you also do um, event work. Right? You, you also do interview work. H- how did that start? Actually, um, I think it was they were looking for someone to do the interviews, and it was ESL, right? Yeah, it was in ESL Manila. Yeah, it was in Manila. Yeah, I think it was the and first I, time that, uh, I saw you. I yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So how, how um, did that how did that happen? I think they were trying to look for someone that actually knew Dota, and that they could contact. And it was actually it was GG Network that was able to suggest to contact me, and it was like I think a few days before ESL that they messaged and I was like, hey, are you are you free that day? Are you interested in like doing interviews? And I was like, a chance to meet the players, of course. Oh. <laughs> Do I have so you just jumped on the opportunity? <laughs> you jumped yeah, on the actually, opportunity. Yeah, actually, before I class? jumped on it, before I jumped yeah. on the opportunity, I I checked my cuts first. It's like, can I still cut that day? <laughs> Oh. And yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so talagang, mo talaga, you, you went for the opportunity. It was very short notice, just because you wanted to 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 get in there. Did you did you really want to become a part of the industry then, or was it something like, oh, this this might be fun? Parang it's ganun. not really wanting about wanting to be part of the industry. It's just that I've yeah. been watching TI. I've been watching the majors for so long with my my friends who yeah. do viewing parties, and then you know suddenly you get this text. It's like. Wow, you get to actually, you know, more of as a fan. You get to meet these people right. that you've been following for years now. You know? Right. And, and so it started with ESL one, and then you, for Manila Major, I know um, Peso, who I previously worked for. They also contacted you to do uh, the Aces interviews, right? Ah uh, yes, the yes, they did. It was like. Right. Um, I actually skipped the first few days of the major because it was like the last few final exams. And right. it's like the day after my last exam that was, okay, I'm head here. Straight, <laughs> head straight. Run straight the, there. Right. So that, that's sort of what I wanted to, to get from you is if it were someone, right? I mean, you've been fortunate. Um, I, I think that's, that's uh, a fair a fair word naman to use for anyone who makes it anywhere is that Very lucky. it's the opportunity. <laughs> yeah, it's luck, right? There's a lot of it's luck involved. But a lot. What, what would you say to someone na gusto niya talaga? Gusto niya talaga maging part of um, esports and gaming industry and maybe they wanted to start here in the Philippines. What would you, what would you say to them? Well, to be honest, um, I think I had this conversation with you before. I'm not sure if it was ESL or if it was the majors after party. You were telling me how it was really, really hard to get into the industry like a few years ago. It was really a climb. But then right. for... Was that I me? Guess, I think I was, was, I was drunk in the after party. Was yes, that me? Yes, yes. I w- it was definitely you. I remember talking to you and went, you were probably drunk. <laughs> but I yeah, probably this, it was what you said. I don't this is what remember. you said. I, I remember it so clear, because I, I was really like, I'm here, <laughs> get to talk to people. You right, told me right. how you were kind of I don't know if jealousy was the word. You were jealous that how why did it why did this only happen now? Wherein you took so many years to like build up this industry, and it's you said hey, it was yeah, kind of like a, yeah. It, yeah. it was amazing that this is actually happening for the Philippines, and. Yeah. I guess for those that actually want to get in the industry now, they if they really want to, um, they it's yeah they can. It's a lot yeah. easier to just check online. A lot of people have been posting like if people are interested in shoutcasting. I think you mentioned that in view with Shinbu, um, the previous episode. 
Right. Um, he, I think their group also posted, like, they were looking for shoutcasters for CSGO, for League of Legends, and if anyone was interested, to just message them. And, for example, if anyone's interested in working for Twitch, we just posted, like, a really long list of... Um, jobs are available, yeah. Jo- available. Job openings. And I guess it's also a lot easier now to, well, even to just go stream on Twitch because they finally partnered up with, you know, with the Philippines. And it's a lot easier to set up to just, you know, go on, play Dota, um, meet other people that are also streaming. Or I guess you could also do RDs, like find something in the industry that not that many people are working on, like try to make it, try to make it better. And, you know, get known for doing something like that. Yeah, I I mean... (laughs) Yeah, no RD. Like, uh, just just touching on uh, RD stuff. I mean, see, RD, he was telling me when when he was trying to get started. Now, one thing uh, really motivated him because he, he came from an advertising firm, and then he was saying, uh, you know what? He doesn't like the design that's you know that's around esports. You know, the aesthetics around esports. So he said, why does it? Why you know why why not help it out? You know, why why not you know help. Help it along by putting his expertise out. But I'm actually right now. I, I, I'm, I was going. Did I say all those things when I was drunk on something and probably singing karaoke with Skim? I, I don't remember. <laughs> but yeah, man, that, that sounds like something I would say though. But yeah, I, I was, I was. I think jealousy is the right word, but let me put that into context for people so they understand. I'm jealous because, Anusha, it's it's a good thing. It's a good kind of jealousy, you know, because yes. it's the jealousy that's coming from. Guys, may progress now. So I think one thing that Seika touched on that is really important is get out there. Kung gusto mo talaga maging part ng industry, get out there, do something. If may skill ka, contribute it. You know, let let people get it, um, or let people get a taste of it. Let people see it. I think for some people, that Joker quote na if you're good at something, never do it for free. <laughs> put that, yeah, put that it. on the, yeah, put that on the back burner for now. Uh, let people see Muna what you're good at because if you're really good at it, people are willing to pay for it. But if you want monetary compensation, God, you're probably not going to get in. So, all right. Um, yeah. Let's talk about you and streaming though. So, you mentioned that it's easier to stream now. Is it is it really that easy to stream now or is it still expensive if you want to become a streamer? Well, to be honest, it's going to be it's only really going to be expensive if you want PLDD fiber or you know something with higher upload speed. Because what makes streaming hard is really the Philippine upload speed right now. If right. you have a regular connection, it caps at 0.5, 0.7, 0.8. 0.8, 0.8. Yeah. But surprisingly, I've been streaming at a max of 0.8. And I've been doing it for like two years now. And you know, oh. it's it's possible. It's possible. I mean the quality isn't that great, but you have to also take into consideration that the people watching you also don't have great connections <laughs> if they're watching no, from fine. here. Yeah, yeah so it's, it's, it's e- kind it of evens out. It works. It works. <laughs> Alright. So so and, because I know people are putting out numbers like you need five Mbps, but you've been streaming on zero point eight and it works. It's fine, yeah. As long as you stick with it, it, it works, yeah. Right. All right. I think that's something that hindi hindi common knowledge to people. I think most people assume na kailangan talaga fiber ka and a fiber connection yeah, can be yeah, like thousand per month. All right. So so yeah, narinig yun guys. If you wanted to stream, you can stream your your games on Twitch at zero point eight, and hopefully someone will watch you. So <laughs> uh, so you you've been streaming your games. Do you treat streaming as a job? I know for a lot of people, lang dream nila is they want to become this big streamer, ganyan, ganyan. But there's still some streamers who, who do it mainly because it, it's an outlet for them. It's it's a way for them to to de-stress and maybe even hang out with some people. How do how do you treat streaming? Um, ano yung parang philosophy mo when you stream? It's definitely something to de-stress. Because before I started um streaming, well, I realized that. No matter what I do, I'm still gonna put in hours to game anyway. So eventually, oh, okay. when I started streaming, that I set the time that I actually used to, you know, just chill to play, um, to play Dota. That's when I try to set up my stream, and it's really fun because you meet a lot of people there, a lot of people to just, you know, yeah. if you usually go on like a one stack, 
hate them because they're so toxic. This, it kind of yeah. saves it because you you're always at, like a full stack now. Right, right, right. And you you uh, you, in, you integrate chat a lot into your streams. You you communicate with your chat room. Uh, what's what's it like? You know, uh, is it distracting? You're you're playing and then you're looking at the chat and you're, you're playing again. Depends on the game, but for Dota, yes, it's definitely distracting. So you kind of yeah. have to balance if you want to get good or if you want to, you know, continue the conversation continue with the people room. in your chat room. Yeah. Sometimes they tell me, hey, it's okay, you don't have to talk to us all the time. You go, you go play the game. Right. Yeah, yeah, go play balance. the game, you're dying. You're dying, lady. <laughs> uh, I can't imagine playing Invoker. I remember shit that Invoker. <laughs> and then if there's also a chat on the side, I, I, I don't I don't think I, I'll be able yeah, to cope. So this is why I play ranked usually like off chat. Yeah, off I don't chat. stream when I'm playing ranked. I usually just play normal in games when I'm playing with them. All right. So it's gonna be a quick question before we move on to the other thing though. But MMR. MMR. Can I can I not answer that question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. My MMR is also see I I, I have cleverly. Hidden my MMR by having a different account. So that's that's also what I do. Um, so I, I want to start direct with like you always playing support. Yeah. So it's <laughs> it is it is. Although I I, I, I will say that seven point XX makes it better for supports, especially it is, in Rack. Definitely. There's so it's much lot, more to do. A lot more fun to play now. Yeah. By the way, nice assist. Your MMR guide for this week. We cover Abaddon as support. So. Check that out on Wombo Combo. See, I'm 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 an expert at plugging things. All right. You are. So and I, I actually no. think I will check that out later. I know, I know. I haven't reached uh, Abaddon in my all hero yet. <laughs> yeah, Abaddon, uh, not terribly interesting to play the first time around, but That's gets true. better. But terribly tough to play against. Well, <laughs> it is. If, it is frustrating. Yeah. You, I, oh, is that an ultimate? Is that a lasso? Well, well guess not. All right, so. <laughs> We we uh we were you sort of touched on this Kanina, um with your you know with al alluding to your your schedule as a law student, everything you're doing. How do you balance? How do you balance uh, law school with gaming and with a Twitch career? Or right, oh you know what? Before that, just before we leave the Twitch career um, and go into this topic, however, I wanted to just as a final note. Do you have any more ambition? To become like this big streaming personality, because I know for a lot of people, the but that's sometimes why they get into streaming in the first place. Parang they want to be um, probably not, probably like not a full time a, for it to be able to, you know. exactly. Like they, they want to be, be a uh, if, if 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 you're into lol, you want to be night blue. If you're into Dota, you want to be sing sing, for example, who's no longer oh, right. in the pro. <laughs> If it's no longer in the pro scene. Admiral Bulldog, man. Admiral Bulldog yeah. is my number one. <laughs> or even Helena, right? So these people who are streaming a big part of their career or their career, period, you know, full stop. Do you have more ambition to do that? Well, really just treating it as something I do um, whenever I have free time because. Right. Um, I guess this is my last year and this is my bar year. I can't really think about it full time as of the moment. But eventually, maybe after I finish everything I have to do with like the loss, but I guess and it. Right. But or as at of least the moment, it was, more seriously, yeah, right? Really enjoying being able to talk to chat, being able to play with a lot of different people online. But it's easier now, Renato, you know, because I know, for example, Julius. Uh, Julius, who is the Twitch partnerships head for the Philippines, but noobs for for people mm -hmm. who may know him from his Mineski days, uh, playing for the Mineski team. But noobs is the person who handles partnerships. It's easier now to become a Twitch partner, you know? so theoretically, it's 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 also more feasible now to become a streamer from the Philippines. It, it how, is. how you know how how porous is that barrier? From becoming someone who hangs out on stream to becoming a full-time streamer, is it easier now too? Well, it's a lot easier actually. The first thing is just to try it out, because a lot of people are like saying, like a lot of people I meet on Twitch and like in chat, they're saying, yeah, I've always been thinking of streaming, but I just, I just haven't tried it out yet. So I just tell them, can yeah, just go for it. If you need help with setting up OBS, XSplit, or whatever, just touch me, and I could help you out depending on your upload speed. 
and we kind of work yeah. things out and yeah. you know just hang out there and see if their test stream is okay you can contact Nino Nino RD on overdrive or <laughs> yeah. overlay contact, you know you can do contact RD if you want really great graphics on your twitch yeah. you know yeah. Yeah. if you do it often enough get the followings it's really that it's just starting it just keeping right. at it eventually people are just gonna drop by and you're gonna make friends and right. yeah, I, I guess that, i guess that message is going to resonate with people who watch this on wombo combo i say i mean kai si nico si nico i i've known nico for in, in the industry for like a year and a half now see si nico started out just and then wombo combo started out he just started it lang. Niya lang. he had shit internet lang and then now wombo combo is this big growing fast growing uh, you know startup in esports in the philippines so i and if you guys are watching this you heard you heard the lady kung gusto niyo mag twitch streamer just just do it you know, I, you know don't make us put shia LaBeouf, shia LaBeouf anywhere on this overlay rd i i forbid you from placing shia LaBeouf on this overlay. do it rd do it rd <laughs> all right so yeah um let, let's 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 transition to that now so how how do you cope? How do you cope um, law school juggling that with gaming and you know um, some event work that that you've been doing? Uh, what's the secret? What's the secret to that? It's mostly it's mostly just fixing your schedule really, because you know even if you're studying law, you can't just keep studying like seven days a week like 24 7. eventually you're really gonna try to especially if you're a gamer you really find reasons to you know put some hours in your day to be able to play to be able to relax so really depending on how heavy your schedule the next day is that's how i decide my schedule if i'm gonna go on it's usually i try to go on during weekends if i have like when i have class and I usually disappear maybe for a month whenever I have exams because our exams last for like two straight weeks and I try to study right. for it like maybe two weeks ahead. And I usually just post, hey, I'm going to disappear again because I have exams, but I'll be back at this day. That's pretty right. much that. Right. So, so the reason why I'm asking is I know, for example, uh, just by the, with the people who are on Hombo Hombo, uh, you know, we have a lot of volunteers. Some of them are in law school then, the right? So, uh <laughs> I, I guess I guess that will sort of resonate with people. Na, uh, e even if even if you're not someone who's looking to get in, but someone who just wants to balance more time between school obligations and gaming, diba? So, um, how has it been with your parents, for example? Because I know that's also another sort of hurdle with a lot of people in the Philippines. Like, how do you talk to your parents if you want to tell them, oh, hey? Um, I want to be more involved with gaming or I just want to game more. How do you talk to your parents so that at least you know sila, kampante sila that you're still fulfilling your obligations? Yeah, my, my parents have been very, very supportive. I know like back then when I was playing RO, they'd be really frustrated with me because it's like I'm always just in front of the PC. Like after school, I'd be there for hours. They'd be worried that I wouldn't be concentrating on my studies. But it's mostly just telling them I'm still putting my studies as a priority. And I'm right. doing this only when I have extra time. And don't worry about it. But yeah, they've been right. really, really, really supportive. Like they've helped me. Uh, with like my internet connection, they've helped me with you know getting new gear for streaming. Right. But it's yeah, going back to uh, don't worry, I still have my priorities. I'm still gonna right. graduate. Don't worry. <laughs> but you you've proven it to them, you know. So I think that's the important part. You've proven to them from an early age now you can uh, juggle it. So so how, let, I'm let's sorry, go back. I'm still gonna game forever. <laughs> so so yeah, let, let's go back to that time. Like like think back to yourself as. Uh, Sega Chu, age, age twelve, probably right. Um, yeah, that will be around that time, I guess. Age twelve, yeah. playing Ragnarok online. How did that? Do you, do you remember how that conversation went with your parents? Was there crying involved? Because I know I remember for myself, there was a time I was playing a lot of Diablo two, and they actually took the computer away from my room because they thought that I was you know playing too much. Oh yeah, yeah. They did that with my Game Boy. I think it was a Game Boy with when pokemon just came out like for a while they'd see uh, me always playing eventually they're like, like okay give give that you can't get that till the weekend but that's, I guess that's the four that's a quadruple, a quadruple <laughs> double a right yeah it's like i'd always a. have the 
PlayStation and like the handhelds. Right. They're usually missing, but I guess it was harder with like a cool desktop where other people are actually using it too. But yeah, right. it's mostly just still reminding them that I'm still doing my studies. Don't worry, even if I'm so, yeah. awake till 4 a.m. playing War of Imperium. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the War of the Imperium at 4 a.m. That's something uh, I kind of miss. But I know that right now, for me, as old as I am, yeah, I, for as old as I am right now, probably gonna hate 4 a.m. War of the oh. Imperium stuff. So, yeah, I like my sleep now. <laughs> All right, so um, we're gonna go into our last topic. Um, so this is your bar year, last year mm-hmm. of law. You're you're doing your thesis. I know you're joining us right after you're you're done with thesis too. So that that's going that has to that has to feel like a million bucks for you. Um, there's a lot of talk now in the greater esports industry about you know standardizing contracts, better um, better protection. For example, pag the things mga players in teams, because for a lot of the teams, wala silang you know good contracts. Your uh, you're about to finish up your law studies. Do you have um, plans or ambitions to? pursue the intersection between esports and law? Well, definitely I am inspired by what's that guy's name? There there has been right. um, news lately, yeah. right? Yeah. That yeah. this guy set up the first ever esports um yeah. esports yeah. firm. It's right. Esports law at, uh, on, on Reddit. Yeah. On Reddit. Mm-hmm. Reddit. Actually, right when that went viral, I started sending it to a lot of my friends that have either already graduated. It's like, okay, look at this, look at this. But maybe in the future, I've always been, I've always been really interested in like the law in that industry. And before, I've been trying to like take. Well, they're mostly copyright cases at the moment, um, right, right. like related to gaming. But yeah, eventually, I do want to. After actually passing the bar, maybe I do want to help right. out in the industry, maybe with suggesting legislation and how to give more benefits to the players, hopefully, or maybe just doing something simple like their contracts. It's a pretty much very related to, well, if you've taken up like sports and entertainment law, the contracts are kind of similar, but not really. So you kind of like mix it up with sports law and, and the entertainment right. industry. There's actually um, there there was actually an elective about it, um, oh, sports really? and entertainment law. I took it a few years ago. I I think it was right. then that was when I was thinking, hey, I think I could actually use this in the future. All right. So um, I know for you know people don't know this, so I'm gonna bring it up here anyway. Um, I consult with you a lot when it comes to when I have some questions. If there's a a law angle to a story, I remember I, I asked you before about taxation. For, oh, yeah. for example, tax for players. Yeah. It's different yeah, if ta- the, the tournament is here, if the tournament is like in TI or something. Exactly, and uh, well, we're not going to you know talk really, really deep about that. But what I did want to ask you is, um, from your opinion right now, just as someone who sees gaming, is also into esports, is also studying the law. If, for example, you are a lawyer today. Ano yung may sa suggest mo na kailangan nating improve in terms of uh, legislation just to help out the the industry. It could be anything. So you know, uh, hit me up. Like for example, you mentioned kanina contracts. What would you improve then? Um, pagdating sa ganon. I guess it might be better if we started doing standardization for contracts because a lot of people don't really think about that when they start like start joining like an esports professional team because they usually usually start out very young. Like they pick out right, players 15. that are just 15, 16. I guess it's maybe one thing that I guess it has to be something that they should think about before they enter. Like a lot of people don't think about these things. You don't think about getting like their passports before they like, join a big tournament and then they realize that yeah. they've won. That it's really a big problem right now. Maybe. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if it's. I don't know who's in charge of it. Maybe Peso. They could maybe make like a brochure for people like that, like to put out all these important things that you have to think about. Maybe give it out to people that are interested. And what else has been there? I guess one other thing that I've been really interested about, like a few years ago, I've been following Bam's work, and right. he he was trying to 
like push for something to give um, esports players like the identity of actually being athletes. That might also be a big help if that that le- piece of legislation could be pushed. Right. So, so the, um, I want to I want to ask that before we go into our final round of questioning. But um, so, so I think that's a misconception with a lot of people, especially pag naigita nila yung there, there's visa pro- problems. So can you explain for us in layman's terms? Bakit kailangan maging uh, recognized as athletes and Philippine esports players? How will that help them in 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 as in, in as simple as you can? Usually, when you get um, registered as athletes, you get tax exemptions. That's one thing. You get certain benefits. And currently, right now, especially for international events, um. Other countries have been making this special visa. They make it like an athlete's visa, right? right. Um, U.S. for uh, P1. Yeah, the for P1 example, for, for yeah, the P1 visa for the U.S. And it might really be a lot easier for them to apply for that visa. For it be, you know, this the specific visa saying, hey, I am an esports athlete and I'm applying for this visa and these are my, my files. Because it's usually, you really have to still they'll go to the admin first, like in charge of the tournament saying, hey, this is what's happening right now. I don't really have anything to back it up except for, you right. know. Please give me a letter of recommendation that I'm going exactly. to Exactly, yeah. All right, so so by by uh, by having that identity in the law, the law will recognize them as athletes. So it's make, it makes it easier for, for other countries to say, oh, okay, so if you're an athlete of this country, you know, we can give you this, uh, th- there's a visa process that's uh, easier for you to take. Parang ganun yung making effect. I guess, yeah, for more standardization, especially right. since, you know, you've been right. joining a lot of online tournaments lately. Right, right. All right. Well, um, uh, before before we go into the other thing, you know, I, just a, a funny story that I wanted to share. So there was that, um, I remember getting a little flack for this because I published an opinion before. Um, there was a team who won uh, a CSGO tournament. I think it was MPGL. It was, uh, I think, a name called Inconsistent. And um, when they won... Their tournament was like a week after, a week later, na lang yung tournament nila, and then they didn't have passports. Like they they don't they didn't even have passports for some of their players, and they were asking for help um, on social media so that Senator Bam can help them out. And then I made a I made an opinion piece saying, na, guys, come on, be reasonable. Kung if you want to join an international tournament, at least malang dapat may passport na kayo, kasi He's a senator. He's not. He's not going to hand out passports for free. Yeah, it's free. not magic. It's, That's true. It's, it's not. You can magic, only help but... rush the process, but it's yeah. not 100%. He can only help expedite the process. Pero dalawang process yung expedite niya sa inyo. It's getting <laughs> yes. the passport and then getting the visa. So, so I, I wrote that, and you know, of course, I, understandably, the team felt bad that I had to say that. Pero I, on my end, I thought it was important to say if my dream kang maging esports professional, get a passport. You also have to be prepared for it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the funny thing was that the uh, there was there was someone from the Bureau of Immigration, uh, from and from the Department of Foreign Affairs, two people messaged me the next day, yeah. and then they said, we, we we read your and there are two separate people and they said we read your you know it, the gist of it was we read what you said thank you for saying it, yung office daw nila actually nagagalit na yung ibang depart yung mga middle manager ng ano nila minsan na naiinis na daw kasi pinaparash daw sa anila palagi yung mga ganito and that's not their job so mm-hmm. I guess with more standardization everyone has an easier time you know the players and the government can have an easier time so yeah I, maybe the I, organizers could also like tip the players off hey this might be good before you actually join the tournament to right, right. fix your passports parang, yeah parang part ng contract that they sign by joining the tournament right you you also have to have passports in case that you mm-hmm. win and that's that's a great idea. So, um, last uh, no, last uh, question for you. There's uh, a lot of misconceptions with, uh, with the with the fan sort of knowing uh, stuff that's happening in esports. What's the biggest legal na uh, legal na misconception between esports that fans so, sort of see from your perspective? So, an example that I might point out is um, yung tax. Yeah, like people. Every time there's someone's going to be, someone's going to post that meme ng mukha ni Kim Hinares. Oh na, yeah. Oi, kayo, may tax yan. So, what's the biggest misconception about that? Well, I don't know, cause 
we're actually well we're actually really taxed for almost everything like for fat for our income and especially when people win big that's the first thing they start to meme about it's like okay that goes straight to the bar but that's i don't know it's really the law i don't think it's really something to i guess to make big news about though i guess right. it's because we mostly just we've already taken up um tax for winnings and it's been there for a long time i guess it's just that the past few years is only this time that we've been winning really really big and a lot of people right. don't really know how much we're supposed to pay for it i guess that's why they're just mostly yeah, I, I guess it also makes for a good joke for some people i guess mm-hmm. well that's true yeah i mean a lot too so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well thank you for joining us um i promise this might uh, go on for 30 minutes hopefully we didn't go to an hour already what's the <laughs> running count well, well already's not listening so there you are we have to... All right. Well, also, yes. But thank you for joining us for this episode, uh, KL Sega Chu on Twitch. It was really, you know, it was really interesting to, to get your, your history, get to know you better, and of course, uh, you know, help educate some of the people watching how to get into the industry and what's happening by things uh, it's, uh, it's industry inside the country. Thank you for joining us. Do you have any shout outs? Well, not at the moment. Hey, Artie, right there. Good luck with editing this. Yeah, I'm gonna shout. Sure. Right, I'm gonna shout out for you. Hello to you know, Seika's uh, Deviant Art Ragnarok Guild. I'm greeting them. For oh, you. I know, yeah. She didn't people, remember the you. People I... that drop by, yeah. People that drop by Twitch, yeah. Hi guys, I talked to you on Twitter anyway, though. So yeah. Also yeah. All right. So thank you. Thank you for joining us for more interviews. Uh, watch out here on Wombo Combo on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook. That's uh, Wombo Combo on Facebook. It's really not hard to find. It's Wombo X Combo on Facebook. You can also join the loop on the Wombo Combo. It's our community group on there as well. You can follow us on most of the social medias. I've been Paus and Data Bago. And join me for another conversation next time. And hopefully it isn't as early and I've had more sleep. So Definitely. thank you. Yeah.